Costume jewelry. Boy, these people have a lot of it. Let's see if there's anything we can buy for resale. Looks like a lot of fun beads. I like the colors. I'm not selling so many of these kind of beads, but the pink is kind of eye-catching and multi-strand and from the 60s. That would be a good look, really, depending on the price, but the prices are pretty low. $10 Here's an English chintz pattern we don't see very often. This is called Ivory because of the color of the background. It's by Crown Ducal, which was a good company. I'm finding a lot of interesting things by them lately. And then on the bottom you see what has been popular for a long time, these black colored backgrounds in chintz, especially like the Balmoral pattern by Royal Winton on the right there. And these have a big collector following and sell for more than the average English chintz patterns do. This guy's got some good old time shines. He seems to have them attached to boards for his setup, which he's working on right now. Like I say, we're a little before the show starts, but he's got Coca Cola and 7 Up from the 1950s buttons to the big 1950s 7 Up sign. It looks like prices are anywhere from about 600 on up. Still banks are another area of collector interest, and I think they're fun. Look at the pirate there. Some of these are newer, the Banthra Code, like the ferry boat there, or the steamboat are from the 70s, but some of the older iron ones are from the 1920s. Prices can range from about $20 for the 70s era all the way up to $75 for the still banks from the 20s. And he has one of the first electric barber poles. Look at that go. That 1896. is so cool. 1896. That is fantastic. That had to be a brand new invention then. And it is priced at 5000 because it is that rare. And look at the condition. That's just amazing. Nice diamond die cabinet, too. He really does have some great stuff. I am a big fan of Higgins Class from Chicago. I was introduced to it by my friend and business partner, Tom Gores, who has Epic Antiques and Lander Street Marketplace in Seattle. Uh, he, he used to live in Chicago. He knew the Higgins. He went to their studio. They were producing uh, pieces like this in the 60s, but they kept doing it through the 90s. I love these dropout bowls, the way the center just drops to the bottom like that, and it's fusion, so it's just great. The, that's the 60s era uh, signature. The gear table is cool. That's interesting, and I love the bachelor chairs. I had a set of these. These are the originals because the originals didn't fold, and those are the correct leather covers, which is great. Sonoman lamps. These are nice, and you can get those bulbs, so don't let that deter you. These could be $500 a pair easily if you sell in the right place, maybe even more. They're just very cool and space agey and interesting looking, and from the 70s, like molecules. I really like jewelry caskets. A ton of them were made. They have an Art Nouveau look. They came out originally around 1900. They're very sweet. Usually they had silk lining originally, oftentimes that's gone. Sometimes they're too tarnished, so you really have to look at condition, but they can sell. And look at these great banks and tobacco humidors. I love this guy with the jester space, only $40. These are all from about 1910. The larger ones were tobacco pots, the smaller ones here are banks, because you can see the bank head in them. These are mainly going to be German or Austrian or round. 1900 to 1910, but I really do like the jester, I have to say, of all of them. That's the one that's the most intriguing to me at $40. I might just buy that guy. Wow, a blast from my antiquing past. Royal Dalton, we had a dealer from Canada who would bring lots of this down to the States and sell it in our malls. And there's your mark. The shapes of these are really interesting. They're from the 1910s or so. Some are Dickens wear, some are other English stories. This Enid Collins purse is a really fun one. The owl is great. The colors are great. It's right around 1970, about the time she sold the company. Pennywise, cute design. The condition is pretty good on this one. You can tell it was worn, but not too badly, and it's still great. Big wooden hair comb, or is it tortoise shell? If it's tortoise shell, you can't really sell it. If it's plastic or wood, you're in business. So be careful. Cute little head bases here, $15 on this one, and then the one next to it with the jewelry, $25. Good prices. I don't see a lot these days. 
Ooh, some really cool cars here. This is a 1934 vintage siren car, and yes, it does have a working siren. Not a lot of kids would have been able to afford that, even though that was the first year the Depression started to ebb. This is a later cop car from 1964, approximately. This is a Chevy Impala, made in Japan as a battery-operated toy, 395. These are very desirable now as well. And then this back here from about 1935 is the Fire Chief. It was another one that was really great because it had light bulbs for light bulbs, and that was expensive then too. These are really fun too. This is Charlie McCarthy. That's Candace Bergen's brother, and he had a Marx car when he was a young character. Next to it is G.I. Joe, who does tricks and turns. G.I. Joe is priced at $195. He's in pretty good condition. This next little cowboy is from the 1950s. And then who do we have down on the end? This is some famous comic character, uh, Mortimer Snurd, yes. And Mortimer Snurd had his own Marx car as well. He's a little more obscure now, but his price on that is $295. Baby boomer kids and some of their older brothers and sisters were big fans of radio shows, and radio shows gave out badges. You sent in box tops, you responded in some way, and they would send you things, and it could be Roy Rogers, or it could be Hopalong Cassidy, or it could be whoever your big hero was. So if you're of the right age, look and see if you recognize any of your heroes in here, because there's a whole bunch of them. And these still sell partly because they're fun and partly because they're badges. $45 to $145 are price ranges on these nowadays. Some cool old gum machines. The topper, the floor model here, is a one-cent variety, so this is pretty early on, probably about 1930. The Ford banks are the ones that we see more often with this spring-loaded top here. Ford would donate to charity. So they became ubiquitous. I like the dexterity machines from the 1950s that they had in the bars. This one's queued over the rainbow. You're looking for the pot of gold. Nice gum machines. I especially like this one. It's officially an antique, 1923 patent date. So it is 100 years old. You can even see the runs in the glass. That's a cool old machine. Very, very nice brass scale here. This is a gum advertising machine but this would have been in a candy shop to weigh things there and then the gum advertising is on the dial so it faces the customer this dealer has a wonderful collection of majolica so let's take a look at some of these nice old pieces these are all 1870s 80s version six inch pitcher with the water lily is 160 it's in really good condition that's actually a good price for those you see a lot of these dessert sets that are German or French from around 1900. This one has a French mark. It's $225 for the entire set with the serving plate and all of these square plates, which have a nice French mark on them. 20th century, I suppose. This set's a little bit older with the grapes. Yeah. And this has a nice German mark. Majolic was made all over Europe. This is a Wedgwood piece from the 1800s. These are also Wedgwood. And we're just going to show you a whole host of different ones. I always like these portrait plates. They're not particularly rare, but they have such a neat look to them. The way that they're done in the two-toning. Every so often you'd see them with seams. These are Wedgwood as well with the birds. And then occasionally you'll even see them in metal bales, which I find interesting. This is another German piece, priced at one thirty-five, and then some really beautiful pieces. I like this tobacco set for only one hundred ten. She seems very pretty and nicely done. The fish pitcher, the creamer is sixty-five. The larger you were behind is one thirty-five. So really, the prices are very good on Majolica now. For new people starting to collect, this is an interesting area with a lot of color and a lot of style that is now available at prices you can afford.